Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and congregations of the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate from your surrounding area. On today's program... Jesus' enemies thought that they could write the end of his story, but they were overruled. The author of every story stepped in and with his own finger he wrote victory, where his enemies had written defeat. The service will begin after this opening hymn. Good morning. I'm Pastor Alex Sluter from Peace Lutheran Church in Rock Rapids. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament reading is written in Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verses 36 through 39. For the Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants, when he sees that their power is gone and there is none remaining, bond or free. Then he will say, Where are their gods, the rock in which they took refuge, who ate the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offering? Let them rise up and help you. Let them be your protection. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God beside me. I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal, and there is none who can deliver out of my hand. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is written in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is according to St. John, chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the whole world has gone after him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for my message this morning is from John 12, verses 12 through 19. When I first arrived in Rock Rapids two years ago, one couple took me and my family on a tour of Western Lyon County. The highlight of the trip was the promise of seeing a white buffalo. As the father of a toddler, I was pretty excited. I couldn't wait to see the look on my son's face when he saw a buffalo for the first time. I asked the driver if the buffalo was albino. Well, he wasn't sure about that, but he was sure that it was white. The trip lasted a couple of hours. We drove along the Sioux River and saw the Black Hills of South Dakota, though I still have my reservations as to whether we made it all the way to the Black Hills that day. We also visited Klondike and stopped at the location of the old mill. We drove through granite and learned about the threshing bee, growing more excited every minute to see the white buffalo. But our guide was saving the best for last. Finally, it was time to head home, but first, the white buffalo. We found ourselves in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by pastures on every side. Thankfully, no one was behind us, so we slowed the car to a crawl and we scanned the fields for our quarry. The driver was the first to spot him on a hill to our left. Look, he cried, the white buffalo. I turned and there it was, the white buffalo in all its glory. It was a large piece of plywood cut into the shape of a buffalo and painted white. A white buffalo. I don't remember the look on my son's face when he saw his first buffalo, but the shocked expression on my face was pretty hilarious, or so the laughter coming from the driver's seat seemed to indicate. As I reflected on that experience, I learned something. Stories often end unexpectedly and uncontrollably. Let me explain. When that drive began, I thought I was going to see an albino buffalo in the flesh, a white buffalo. But that story ended unexpectedly, not with a flesh and blood buffalo, but with a plywood buffalo painted white, a white buffalo. Also, I couldn't control the ending of that story. I wasn't the one in the driver's seat. For me, that drive ended unexpectedly and uncontrollably. It was a white buffalo story. And all of us have white buffalo stories. Stories that end in an unexpected way. Stories whose endings we can't control. For example, your toddler says, I dress myself. And he emerges from his room a few minutes later with his underwear on his head. That is a white buffalo story. Something unexpected happened and the ending was beyond your control. I used to think that the clothing choices of a toddler were within my control, and then I had a toddler. White buffalo stories happen all the time with children. Thankfully, those endings are often happy or humorous. Unfortunately, many white buffalo stories end in tragedy. These are the stories that are the hardest to hear. They are even harder to live, but we all have them. For example, divorce is a white buffalo story with a tragic ending. No bride imagines divorce on her wedding day. Her mind is filled with scenes of happiness and love stretching into eternity with her new husband. But years later, she finds herself in the middle of a messy divorce, exposing her life to the scrutiny of a court so that a judge can decide how to divide her property and children between her and her soon-to-be ex. The unexpected, the once unthinkable, has occurred. What's worse, that ending often feels uncontrollable. While a person can sometimes look back on life and find reasons for why a divorce occurred, it is much harder to see how dozens of different factors snowballed into tragedy while you are still in the middle of it. Even if the divorce occurs for good reasons, is anyone able to see the ending while they are still at the beginning of the story. The ending is unexpected and it feels beyond our control. Addictions are also white buffalo stories. 
I visited an AA meeting once, and one of the participants said, I chose to drink, but I never chose to become an alcoholic. He never envisioned that ending for himself, but it came to him just the same. His story ended unexpectedly and uncontrollably. He never thought to himself, I am choosing to become a slave to this thing. Instead, he probably tried to convince himself that he controlled his alcoholism right up to the point where it controlled him. A white buffalo story, for sure. All of us have white buffalo stories. Many are about our health or relationships. Some of them are silly, but some of them are tragic. And those stories are the ones that stick with us. They teach us that life is often beyond our control. We live in a white buffalo world. Even the story in our gospel lesson is a white buffalo story. Jesus has recently raised Lazarus from the dead, and you can't control news like that. Word gets around that the miracle worker is coming to Jerusalem for the Passover, and huge crowds go out to meet him. They shout, Hosanna, which means save now. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Praise fills every mouth and palm branches line every step that Jesus takes. The crowd greets Jesus as the great Redeemer through whom God will resurrect his people. And Jesus does nothing to dampen these expectations. Instead, he finds a young donkey and he rides on it, fulfilling the prophecy from Zechariah that Israel's king would come to Jerusalem mounted on a donkey's colt. But not everyone is happy. Jesus' enemies say, this is getting us nowhere. See how the whole world has gone after him. They are tired of waiting for Jesus' downfall. They decide to write the end of his story themselves. Five days later, Israel's king is hanging on a cross, bleeding, dying, gasping for breath, Hosanna's no longer filled the air, but he saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let God deliver him if he desires him. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Who would have seen the crucifixion as the ending of the triumphal entry? Who would have seen the jeers as the end of the Hosannas? Who would have seen Good Friday as the ending of Palm Sunday? No one. It is a white buffalo story. The ending is unexpected, uncontrollable, and the ending is tragic. But here's the thing about God. While we cannot control the ending of our stories, God does, and God transforms tragedy into triumph. Jesus' enemies thought that they could write the end of his story, but they were overruled. The author of every story stepped in, and with his own finger he wrote, Victory, where his enemies had written defeat. Easter Sunday is the victory of God. It is the transformation of tragedy into triumph. That's a white buffalo story of the best kind. The ending is unexpected. God raised Jesus from the dead. And it is also uncontrollable. Nothing could stop God from declaring victory. With God, we live in a white buffalo world of the very best kind. In Christ, every tragedy is transformed to triumph. Because, while we can't write the ending of our stories, God can. And he has given us the victory in Christ. At the beginning of the sermon, we mentioned two different tragedies, divorce and addiction. Divorce often leaves a person feeling unclean, unworthy, sinful, and all of that may be true. It could very well be that a person's actions have earned them each of those things. But when Christ steps into that story, he takes his finger and he writes victory, where his enemies had written defeat. In Christ, every sin is forgiven. 
The lonely are placed in the bosom of the church, God's own family. But best of all, what matters now is not what others think of you, but the love that God has shown to you, the love that he pours from the wounded heart of Christ into your own heart. In Christ, God transforms tragedy into triumph. The story of the addicts, which is filled with fear, compulsion, and loss, is transformed by Christ into a testimony of God's grace. He is the one who seeks the straying sheep. He is the one who welcomes the prodigal son. He is the one who raises the dead and gives them life. God writes victory where his enemies had written defeat. In Christ, God transforms tragedy into triumph. That is true for all of us. God is in the business of raising the dead. He is in the business of changing endings. And whatever the enemies of sin, death, and hell have written on the hearts of God's people, God can overwrite with a single stroke of his pen, victory. This week, we have an opportunity to witness the victory of God once more. On Thursday, we will sit with Jesus in the upper room and eat his final meal with him. Then the altar will be stripped bare as a reminder of Christ's betrayal. On Friday, we will enter the church in silence. The cross will be shrouded in black as a reminder of Christ's death. And we will hear his final words from the cross, ending with, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Everything looks like tragedy. But then comes Easter Sunday. There we will see that Christ is King. Christ is Savior. Christ is Lord. God has written victory where his enemies had written defeat. Tragedy becomes triumph for God's people every Easter morn. So join all God's people in celebrating the victory of the King this week. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God which passes all understandings. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.
Thank you for viewing Main Street Living this morning. Our hope is that you have been blessed and encouraged by this presentation. If you are able to attend local services, I would like to invite you to worship with our congregation. If you are in the Rock Rapids area, please join us at Peace Lutheran Church Sunday mornings at 1015. This broadcast is supported by viewers like you, and their financial help allows this broadcast to continue. You can join us by sending a contribution of any amount to this address. More information about this program can be found at MainStreetLiving.com, including links to other LCMS websites, congregation locations, and additional ways to donate. Thank you again for joining us today, and have a blessed week. We hope to see you again at the same time next Sunday on this station.